Here we are, we are in Joshua, chapter 10, verse 28. Uh, it says, V'et Makeda lachad Yehoshua, that Joshua conquered Makeda. By the way, it's interesting that uh, grammatically, just grammatically, it says V'et Makeda. Instead of, it could have said, Yehoshua lachad et Makeda, which would have put the... Uh, noun, verb, and direct object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this time it starts the sentence with the direct object. At Makeda, Makeda, and Makeda, Joshua conquered. Just an interesting style that, uh, that the, uh, the, the the writer is using here. At Makeda, let's so again, at Makeda, Lachad, Lachad, Joshua. How do we usually find it in Hebrew? Is it? it can be either one. I know it can be either one, but is there a... Like in English, normally it's uh, subject right. or object. Right. I'm just saying in, in Hebrew, it goes both ways. But it's, it's just interesting when you, when you start off the sentence with the et, you already know it's a direct object. Yeah. It's not the beginning of the sentence. It's the middle of the sentence, really. Yes, my Is it an emphasis thing? I mean, maybe in English we would do that too as an emphasis. Well, it says in the Torah also... Uh, when talking about homosexual relations, it starts off with Viet Zachar. You see, in the, the, the Zachar, the male, is the indirect object, is the direct, yeah. well, it's indirect, well, no, it's really direct object, whatever. It's the object, yeah. I, the grammar thing. When it comes to English grammar, I don't, uh, yeah. you know, the terms is very hard, because yeah. Ed Zachar. So normally, Ed is the direct, direct object marker. But there's yeah. not in the ha there. But okay. But anyway, I don't think there is. Maybe there is an et hazachar. That would have to be it. I don't have the pasuk in front of me. But there, there again, you have that the et, yeah. which is the direct object yeah. marker. And so, but it's at the beginning of the sentence. And then it's, uh, the sentence says you should not lie with a man like you do a a, a woman. Okay. But it says viet zachar and the man and the male you should not lie with like a woman. So the, the whole so I I read a tshuva from the conservative movement who was trying to figure out how to uh, uh, make it so it's good that homosexuals uh, are good. So he made a whole drasha on that the Ed Zachar, right? It was, it was an interesting approach he tried. I, I don't buy it, but it was an interesting approach. But he was using the grammar. To try to say that we don't under we we missed it, we missed that point. He already made a whole drush on it. It was like that. It's uh, it was a very interesting drush. I wouldn't put stock in it, but okay, fine. But I remember reading that, and he was basing it all upon how the sentence was structured. So it's it's uh, it's something we have to look at. We have to be aware that it happens in Hebrew, and sometimes it could tell you something. Most of the time, it's just. You just translate it uh, the way it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. So here we go. So like I said, he conquers it. Vayomer who on that day, vayakeha lefi cherev v'ed malka hecharim otam. So he smote it with the uh, with the sword, and its king again malka it means her king, but and it's her because the land is a uh, feminine. So its king, that's why we translate its king, uh, he destroyed and he destroyed uh, them. Vehicle Nefesh and all the souls of Shirba that was in it, in the, in the city. Loish Ir Sarid, there was no remnant remaining. Vayash Lamelech Makeda, and he did uh, to the king of Makeda, Ka'ashir Asol Lamelech Yeriso, just as he did to the king of Jericho. So one of the questions you always have to ask is, why are you comparing the king of Makeda to the king of Jericho? What, what's the real comparison going on there? That's one of the questions you can easily ask. Okay. So the Mitsudas David explains on one question. He's saying, V'et Malka and his king. Yitachain, he says, Yitachain shehem lichu aleim melech aker. It's, an, it's trying to say that they crowned upon themselves another king. Yilamala, because before, Nehemiah Yeshua, he made melech Hebron. 
says that Joshua killed the king of Hebron, Beit Kol Reha, and all its cities. We didn't get the. Uh, so why is he picking that? Okay, there must be another pasuk he's referring to. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a different pasuk. Okay, that's why. Uh, the Masu- uh, the uh, Malz says Beit Makeda. He says Tehila. He's picking on the word Beit Makeda. What's going on with Makeda? Yeah. And his question is, why didn't he fight with Makeda immediately after he found the king? Why did he do it right, uh, immediately? Why did he wait? So he says, Ve'ed Makeda. Tehila, in the beginning, Shechashav HaMalachem Chayim, when he thought that the kings were alive, Hityare Lihilachem Makeda. He was afraid to fight in Makeda. Balti hilo malach hamilcham upon him therefore because he was afraid of opening two fronts he didn't want to he, he didn't want to attack one side then the king's going to come from the back so you can't open two fronts so he was afraid to do that mm-hmm. uh, because the the cave that the kings were hiding in were, was outside of Makeda in the outskirts. But now that he did kill the king, he knows the king is dead. He knows they can't come from the rear. And therefore, uh, what's it called when you, when you come like this? So ours, when you come like this, what's it called? Uh, you have one person here. When you're surrounded. You're surrounded from all sides. He didn't want that situation. So, but now he knows that's not true. Now we can attack Makeda. Okay, so the question was, why did he attack it before? That's it, that's his question. Why did he wait? Shouldn't have waited to attack Makeda because he thought there were two fronts. Potentially, he know where the king was, and so if he's going to leave the king alive, then what happens is he goes to attack Makeda. The kings come from the rear. He's surrounded by all sides. They're going to be smashed if he can't do that. Okay, so that's how the Malvin explains that. Twenty-nine. So Joshua crossed over, and all of Israel with him from Makeda to Livna, im Livna, and he fought with Livna. So Rashi, uh, I mean, the Malva explains again what she's doing. Vayelachem im Livna, he fought with Livna. Yesh hevdel b'pa'al lechem. Bain Sheba Akharav Milat Im O Milat Al. He said there's a distinction. Good morning. There's a distinction when you're dealing with uh, wars or fighting between the words Im, with, and on or against. So, Lacham uh, Sheakharav Milat Im. When the word of warring is used with the word with, Im. So that's indicating that both sides fight with each other. And that was the case of Livna. Because now Joshua pursued after the five kings. And it was not his intent. To fight in Livna. Rach Anshe Livna, Yatsu Le Krato, but the man of Livna went out to meet him in battle. Ba'avram Shama, when he passed there, to Moshe Ketuv, Yavor, Yeshua Livna, that Joshua passed, uh, crossed over to Livna. Bidgaru Bam Milchama, and they engaged in war. Benilchamuza Imza, and each one fought the other. It wasn't a one-sided battle there. The Lachish Ketivelechem Ba. When it comes to Lachish, on the other hand, it says they fought in it. So Gadru Shaover Alto Ad Tocha Ir. The Lochem Betocha, which means that they went through and they actually broke into the city and fought in it. The Chulhu Ketivelechem Ale. And in all of them, it says they fought against them. Kehayu Are. I'm sorry, and in all of the places where it says that he fought against it, Aleha on it, Kihayu Are Choma, that is the walled cities, Vayalachem Aleha, that's posted a Mipsar. So they would have to uh, lay siege against it 
in order to gra uh, to go through the wall, the, the fortresses. You understand? So the Malbim is asking a question. He says, first of all, in the Pasuk, it's contradictory. That's really his problem. It's contradictory. It says first that he crossed over mm -hmm. from one place to the other, which means I don't have, it seems I, I have nowhere to fight with you. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly it says he fought with them. So what's going on here? Either I'm passing through, I have no interest to fight, or I, I'm making war with you. Yeah. And so, he's, so that's why the mouth has to say, it has to look at these words with im, al, ba, and say, what's going on here? What's the, what, again, what is the author of Yehoshua trying to indicate with each of these terms? Mm -hmm. Just like in the Torah, where we don't waste words, mm -hmm. And we want to understand every single word, what, what's the nuance of every word. To a limited sense, we have that same feeling in Tanakh. In other words, if something would happen that we really, there's no reason. It's superfluous or there's no logical reason for it. We're willing to live with it. <clears throat> Unlike in the Torah, well, we're not willing to live with it. We have to know. In Tanakh, we're willing to, in Nakh, we're willing to live with a possibility of an extra word. Mm -hmm. But it's, if, it's, if you can learn something from the word, we want to learn from it too. Mm -hmm. And especially when it's being very consistent in what's going on. So that's why you're changing in the middle of, of the whole thing from, like I said, between im, al, ba. So mm -hmm. that's why the Malvin is fit to explain to us, uh, based upon the Kamars and so on and so forth. I mean, they said it first, but it's, that's why the, the, uh, they had to come out and explain to us what's going on in those situations. Okay, it's like it's, sometimes you can get away with the word, sometimes you can't. So in this case, we're learning something major in, in, the, uh, in the system. Okay, so then you have Lamed. Vayiten Hashem Gamota. Now, Hashem also gave it, the, the city of Livna, Biyad Yisrael into the hand of Israel, Biyat Malka and his king, Biyakeg Lehi Charev. He smote it, it, as it means the city, according to the, uh, with the sword. Biyat Kol Anef Ashashir Ba, and all the souls that are in it, in other words, they broke through the walls. Lahish Ir Ba Sarid, there is no, uh, no survivor. Biyat Malka, Kashir Asolamil Yericho. And he did to the its king, to Livna's king, just as he did to the king of Jericho. By the way, I, I asked the question, but I did not answer the question. So I'm asking the question now to you. Why did it have to keep referring back to the king of Jericho? Mm. Oh. What would you say? You hear the question, Bill? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why does that have to keep referring back to the king of Jericho? Say it one time, say it at the very end, I don't care, whatever the case is going to be. But why do we keep saying, like you did to the king of Jericho? So the Radak says, that's an thing. He says, whenever it says, like he did to the king of Jericho, is to inform us that he did not capture him alive, then hang them, like he did to the king of Ai and to the five kings. Rather, he killed them amongst those who were killed uh, during battle. <laughs> In other words, it wasn't direct or uh, direct assault against the king. They, they killed the king and everybody else. That's all. It was a, a wholesale, no, you're not better than anybody else sort of deal. Unlike the king of Ai, had he felt they had to capture him and then hang him, as it were. And then also the five kings that we just read about uh, last week. <laughs> so now we're on Lamed Aleph. And it says, V'ya'avor. Once again, we have V'ya'avor. V'ya'avor Yeshua B'chol Yisrael Imo. We live in Lachisha. So Joshua, again, with all Israel, crossed over with him from Livna to Lachish. 
Vayichen aleha. They encamped against it. Vayelachem ba. And he fought in it. So now I'm going to ask you, what happened? Hmm. Based on what we've just said on the previous pursuit, what and uh, why the verse according to the Malvin have to say he camped against it, Aleha against it. So what does that tell us about Lachish? Was it a walled city or an unwalled city? What do you say? Walled city or unwalled city? Fifty fifty guess here, right? <laughs> What would you say? If he encamped on it, against it. So it what does like the mountain he, say? It sounds like there's a wall there. Uh, absolutely. There's a wall there. Now, when it says, Vayelache ba, and he fought in it, what does that teach us? Again, with that wall, what does it teach us? Lidna was attacking Yeshua with the Shetek Lidna. No, that's not what was on. No. Fought in it? Uh, what does that mean? Sounds like he got through the wall. They right? reached the wall. Right, exactly. That's what it is. So they camped again. That's what the Malcolm was saying. Vayichan aleha. They they camped against it, which means they had a wall. They broke through the fortress. Vayalachemba. And they fought inside. That's what I'm saying. When you understand the commentaries and you plug them back into the sentence, you see a whole bunch of... You have information you never would have known. What is that? Lachish... Uh, uh, was it Lachish? Lachish was a walled city. They breached the city and they got into the city. Mm. Fine. Mm. Okay. You also uh, can uh, can learn from this that when it says he passed over, they were passing over again. Um, it could be that Lachish. Well, it's a walled city, so they're not going to come out. They were they were relying upon his friend in the walled city, but apparently he was going to conquer Lachish. Okay. Mm. You understand, Bill? What is mm-hmm. he from? Okay. But he's using the word "vayavor," uh, um, which we're translating as, as crossed, crossed over. over. Um, I mean, is there some latitude? Because they're translating it here as proceeded. Uh, it just, you know. Avar is word cross. I'm just translating literally. I'm just translating literally. The, the one thing I was told when I was teaching, and I think this is a what we call in Hebrew a klal gadol, a major principle. In order to properly understand the problem of the text, if there is a problem of the text, is to translate it literally. When I translate it literally, then I say, what do you mean he crossed over? He crossed over, but he fought with somebody. It sounds like I'm I'm just going from point one to point two, and I have no interest in that point. Yeah. So why am I suddenly engaging there? And why is it, so when I translate literally, he camped against it, on it, literally on it or against it. You can go on or against. He camped on or against it, and he fought in it. What do you mean he fought in it? Just what does that mean? Yeah. So it doesn't say when you tra- as, as I should say in her by the way. So it's literally ah. it's in her. Again, referring to the city. So uh, you learn a whole bunch of stuff just from translating it literally and understanding the grammar that you never would get. Again, if I translate in English, if I just give it to you, uh, if I would give you the English copy yeah. and say, here you go, yeah. now you're looking at it and you're looking at the English and you tell me, and I ask you, is it a wall city or not a wall city? You look at me and say, hi, what am I, a fortune teller? <laughs> I don't know what it was. I'm not a historian, but it's the text is telling you. But you're never going to get it from the English. You understand what I'm saying? You never will get it from the English. Right? Would you get it to Wall Street from the English bill? No, not at all. Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, how expressive uh, prepositional phrases are. Right. And the agreement. Uh-huh. So that, that's why I'm saying when, I, when I'm translating, I try to translate as literally mm-hmm. as I can. Can you say proceeded? Yeah, it's a nicer way to say it. But then, am I learning? But yeah. and, uh, I want to know, if, if I say he proceeded from one to the other, let's go back to the previous verse, where it says, 
he crossed over, mm-hmm. he proceeded, Joshua and the whole city, all, all of Israel, proceeded from Akedah to Livna. So then it sounds like he wants to fight with Livna. Yeah. Okay? And suddenly the verse says, and he fought with Livna, which the Malbim is saying, that means that both armies went to meet each other. He was going to pass. He was, when I say, for instance, I'm going to give you a nice example. When we go from South Bend to Chicago, okay, we pass many, many Lusteklach. Mm-hmm. Okay? It was maybe Gary, him, and, and that's the only ones I remember because I have a relative there. But the other ones, I have no idea what these things are. But I'm passing it. I'm crossing over the major highway. I'm crossing it. I really they have no interest to stop there. If I have to stop for something else, but now suddenly somebody, suddenly somebody comes out and detours me, and I'm forced into another situation. Okay, so I have to deal with that. They're not, they're coming to me. They're coming. So we're engaging with each other. Normally I would have passed you. Now if I just went, if I just had proceeded from, uh, where was it again? Proceeded from Makeda to Livna. That it sounds like he wants to have a fight with Livna. Mm-hmm. If you would never have understood that Livna came out to meet them. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why yeah. when you say crossed over, so it gives you another def- another possibility. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get past, and suddenly you're fighting with me. Why are you fighting with me? I have nothing to do with you. You know, and this comes in uh, through with. Uh, What's his name? The king. It was the Egypt. It was the the uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh Necho. Pharaoh. I think it was Necho was his name. And he won in in uh, King Cheskiahu's time. I think it was Cheskiahu. No, uh, Yoshaya. Yoshaya. Yoshaya's time. I'm pretty sure it was. And he says Yoshaya, King jo- Josiah. I think they changed it in English. And they said he said to him, I want. It was either Josiah or Cheskiah. Do you remember the story? When he wants to pass through with Necho, he wants to pass through. He doesn't want to attack Israel. Do you remember it? Are they or not? Okay. What are the kings? I forget who the king was. It was either Josiah or Cheskiah. No, I, nobody, I don't think there was anybody else in between. So the, the Pharaoh went to him and said, Look, king, I love you. I have no fight with you. I just want to cross through your land. No fights. Mm-hmm. It's easier to go from my place, this other place that I want to conquer. I have not, no animosity against you. Please just give me passage through your land. The king says, no. You can't come to it. Why do you say no? Because the Torah says, if I'm following, I must, it must be, yeah. if I'm following Torah, if the, if the whole uh, country is following Torah, not even the sword will come through our land. Hmm. So he thought, he had everybody do, had done teshuva. That's how the rabbis explained. Oh, it was Cheskiah. It was Cheskiah. So he thought, that's what it was. He said to the king, no, you can't go. And go through. He said, so Neko again said something. You don't understand. God told me, your God told me to go through. He gave me the ticket. So don't stop me, or otherwise I'll have to fight you and you're going to lose. <laughs> Cheskiah doesn't listen to him. He fights, Cheskiah dies. He fights, in the, he lost, he's lost in the battle. That was a case, though, of Yavor. He wanted to pass through. He didn't want to deal with it, and we came out to engage him in battle. So now again, if I don't, if I use the word proceed, then I would have been, and Necho proceeded to Israel at the fight. Okay. You would miss yeah, that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's why, could you say proceed? I'm not going to argue with uh, the Heliga Art Scroll. You know, God forbid, I should argue with them. But it's uh, but that's why I think it's so important to translate literally, then because then you hear the problem, if you will, with what's going on, and that's why the Malbin could say what he's saying. If he's just proceeding, he has nothing to argue that im al ba. There's nothing to argue about at that point. It'll change the language. Who cares? This okay. Is fantastically uh, expressive language. You know, there's just echoes within these words because the. Uh, they pass from it's more than that the Hebrews are the people who cross over 
Oh, so you get the, right. the idea of the Hebrew fruit is part of this process. Uh -huh. And then when you get down here, something else we could come up with. Um, Aleta. Right. You know, that's where we get the word Aliyah. Right. And oh, yeah. that, we can assume that this city was not only walled, but it's up on a hill because you go up to it. Oh, so that is that here that the Malcolm is disagreeing with you. He doesn't. He doesn't like that. What he's saying is the reason you're going ag up against it or against it because you have an impediment there. You and you have to scale the wall. the wall. You have to scale the wall. <laughs> right, so that would be your aliyah. But it's not that the, the, the land was well, something is up. Right, right. That tells right. you about Correct. the wall. That Correct. You have to go up. Correct. Hundred percent. That's true. Yes, that could be also part of that. Where the mouth of and, and little words in Hebrew, like that concept that there's never a, a lost an extra word. Right. You have to look very carefully on um, because they're mm -hmm. very expressive. Little words are really correct. Expressive. That's what I'm saying. If you had in any other language that we would use, you would miss it. If you would miss this, you would so, not get it. So somewhere in here, after you go over. Then you're in it. Correct. That's what the Malcolm said. So right. there's got to be something there. Right. 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 You breach the walls, and now you're going to fight. Okay. So then, Lama Bay. Vayitain Hashem et Lachish. And Hashem gave the city of Lachish, Biyad Yisrael, into the hand of Israel. Vayil Kedah, Biyom Hashini. And he, and he conquered it. And that was Israel, the individual as a unit, conquered it. Because it's uh, uh, Yilkad is he. He conquered it. But it's not he. It's the nation conquered. So the unit Israel conquered it. By Yom Hashini on the second day. Uh, or if I really want to go... Uh, no, it's the, se the second day, right? But you could also say that's Monday. By Akel Kharev. It's either Monday or the second day. If it's the second day, what's the question? Which day is it? What, what's the second day of what? Yeah, yeah. Second day of what? And if it's Monday, you really think I said, I need to know it's Monday? <laughs> well, what's, the, what's the nuance of a Monday? So you're pushed back to the, the obvious question is, what's the second day? Mm, mm, okay. mm. Second day of what? And he, again... Second day of fighting. It could be. It could be a second day of fighting. We'll see. Anything is open right now. <laughs> as long as you hear the question, that's the main thing, to hear the question. You have to rip it apart. You mm -hmm. can't just read this and say, oh, it's a nice story. <laughs> rip it apart. Let's understand what this, the author, again, I forget who wrote, it wasn't Joshua who wrote this. It was somebody later. But the author is trying to tell us something with every single sentence. The Akel, if he, Cherub, and he, again, the people, Smote it with the sword. They call an nefesh sheba, and uh, all the souls uh, and every soul that was in it, the city, kechol asher kechol asher saw like all that was done to livna. It's no longer that all the, so we have a different theory, uh, too apparently that now going instead of Jericho now is as you did to livna. What's the comparison to livna to the city? Hmm. What would you say? Any guesses? You could argue, I'll give it to you, you could argue that just as Livna came out to meet them in battle, the people of Lachish, even though they had a city, even though they had walls, they didn't act like the people of Jericho and just rely upon the walls, but rather they also went out to meet them. You could argue that. Why? Again, because of the name, because of the word Vaya Avor. He's crossing over. Yeah. Oh. You could argue that. And maybe it's that saying, why is saying like the like happened to Lisbon? 
you also have the Malb, uh, the Radak, who says what you said. He agreed with you. What's the second day? The second day of camping against him. So you answered what the Radak explained. Okay, so, uh, sometimes it's simple, but you have to ask the question. Because his question was, what's the second day? Second day of what? Okay. By the way, I want you all to think about something. We talk about, in, in our modern history, we talk about the miracle of the Six-Day War. Here you're seeing, in one day, they went in, conquered, and got out. What's the big thing? Vayitein Hashem. The, the author is telling us, once again, I have to find a who, so I don't want to send the author. But the author is telling us it wasn't our military expertise. Vayitein Hashem. Hashem gave it into uh, uh, the B'nai Yisrael's hand. It's always, we're always giving credit to Hashem for this. It's never our uh, uh, military might is nothing to do with us. It's Hashem is using us to get the job done. And so if somebody wants to delude themselves into believing that they are the ones who are uh, responsible for all these victories, well, that's up to them. Mm-hmm. But it, the, the author is continually reminding us, no, 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 no. It wasn't us. It wasn't just a great plan. It wasn't that we were... Uh, Tremendous military might. It was Hashem gave them into our hands. Now what happens? Vama Gimel. Az Allah Horam Melech Gezer. So then Horam, the king of uh, Gezer, went up. What do you go up? Lazor et Lachish. To help out Lachish, the people of Lachish, which we had already destroyed. So it's interesting that they're coming to do that. Be'akehu Yehoshua et Amo. And Joshua smote him and his nation and built the Sarid until there was nothing remaining from, from his people. Any questions there? No? I would say it's just a little too late. What are you coming out for? It's already destroyed. Let's see what happens. So, Vayavor Yoshua, Vechol Yisrael Imo, and so Joshua crossed over and all of Israel with him, Milachesh Eglona, from Lachesh to Eglon, Vayechanu Aleha, and again, he encamped against it, Vayilachamu Aleha, and he fought against it. What are you learning here? Wall City? It's a walled city, what else? Remember the two words. On it, on it. He encamped against it and he fought on it. They didn't breach the wall so quickly here. Oh. They're fighting against it. There's a prolonged fighting apparently. It wasn't as easy, apparently, I guess. Okay, let's continue. Let's see what happens. So, Veil Kadua Bayomahu, and he conquered, they, excuse me, they conquered it. Bayomahu on that day, Bayakua, and they, it's more, so long a heat, by the way, so long as the individual, the, the unit is they. The Ficherev with the sword, they call a Neva Shishirba. And every soul that was in it, now we know they breached the wall. Bayomahu Hecharim. On that day, they destroyed it. Kicholashir Asa Lilachish. Like all that they did to Lachish. So even though they went up against it and they fought and took a little time, and still on that day, they conquered it. Bayal Yoshua Bakolishra Elimo. Meglona Chabrona. And once again, Josh was on the move. So he and all of Israel go, has, uh, they go up. It's not like crossing over, if you notice. Mm-hmm. This didn't, didn't go, it crossed over. Vayal. And Joshua and all the people went up with him from Eglona to Hebron. By the way, I, I haven't been pointing this out, but Hebrona is to Hebron. Right? Because of the directional hay at the end. So instead of Hebron, Hebrona, that's a, a very common in Torah. 
but it's important to know the name is not Hebron. It's not. It's the place. The name place not Hebron. The name place is Hebron. So they went up from Eglon to Hebron by Aleha, and again they fought against it. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anything. With when I, I'm going by El Kadua, they captured it by Akua Lefichereb, and they smote the city, according with the sword, Bet Malka, they call Areha, and its king, and all of its city. They call Nefesh of Sheba, and all the people that were in the city. In its city, sorry. No cities. Lohish Ir Sarit, there was no remnant remaining. Kichol Asher Sal Eglon, like all that he did to Eglon, by Echarei Mota, and he, uh, he, he made it, destroyed them, they call it never shir ba, and every soul that was in there. So Ra, uh, Malum explains that it could do ha. He con- they conquered it. He near the command further on it says muvuar shikalev lachat et echavron. Further on we learn that Kalev, Caleb, Mo, uh, the one who the spy who had gone in with Joshua. Joshua and Caleb are old friends here. So Caleb would conquer Hebron, the Chamish, the Nisatan Aris, in the fifth year of them conquering, uh, of them entering Israel. The Chain, so that's the Chain. The Chain Ma to do Achikash Yeshua Lachad Devira, so to Mashke to Son. Where is it? Shatni Ben Kenas Lachada. So it's. It's that, so what's written afterwards that Joshua conquered Zavira, that's also contradicted by what's going to be written where it says Atniel ben Kanaz, the son of Kanaz, conquered it. Do you understand what, what his question is right away? His question is right away, we're saying that Kalev is giving credit for conquering Hebron. Yet right here, we just said Joshua conquered Hebron. Yeah. There we're going to say in Shoftim, the book Shoftim, the judges, Atniel conquers uh, Devira. Yet here we're going to say that Yoshua did. So you can't have two people doing it. One person does it, not two people. You understand the question? That's his question. Good. So then, Sarah Lamar. So you have to say, this is how he answers it. So Yoshua lachadet ir Hebron. That Yoshua conquered the city of Hebron. For those who... Uh, for our purposes, Hebron is where the uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were buried. That's uh, where the cave of Machpelah is. Mar to Machpelah, that's in Hebron. Right now it's an Arab city. It's an Arab city, right? It's an, I think the Arabs have possession of Hebron. The Kalev Kavash, Migrushe Ha'ir Vichasura, but Kalev conquered the districts around it. Not the city itself, but the area around it. The Chimavu Hashem Shirak the Sadeh Ha'ir B'Chasura not in the Kalev, and it's explained over there that the only thing that was given to Kalev for uh, for his efforts were the fields of the city and its surrounding, but not the city itself. The Chevron Shma Ha'ita Ir Halavim because Chevron was the city for the Levim that was given over to them. As it explained further, became Sarah for Mahab Devir. And so you'd also have to say the same for the place uh, of Devir. The Gami Shlomo Shasi portion is called the Kaman. And also you'd have to say that the story is mentioned further on that Makom, uh, in, uh, okay, in the chapter 14, Makom Okan Shiv Shabbat Shabbat Yeshua Lifnei Chevron, that's the time. That Joshua came before Hebron, his Kiro told Kalev, after Chat Moshe, he met, uh, Kalev mentioned to him the promise of Moshe, but Natan lo Yehoshua in Hebron, and so Joshua gives him Hebron, Vayelachem al Ha'ir, and he fights uh, over uh, the city, Vayechot en Ha'anakim, kills the Anakim, the giants of the area, Venit Yaches, the Yehoshua, but the victory, was given over as or as it was called Joshua's victory. Why? 
he now tetachet the adult uftan the top because it was done under his uh, charge. The chen as he caught Adniel bank to Naz at the vir and also to say the same thing for Adniel the son of Kenaz uh, uh, fighting the vir. The extra gam gamei yishvumi tamza and it could also be called given Joshua the vich because he was a commander in charge. The samach amash yivua achar acharizeb beinim nachalot. Tochen, Kavush, Echaya, and also the same thing you can say about how the lands were inherited. Umash, Zupo, Shahara, Get Malka, Gam, Shekavar, Niska, Shahara, Melchem, and Kivon. And here that where it says that they, he killed its king, and also mentions that they killed the king of Givon. Pirisha, Radak, Shabtochka, Him, Lithu, Melech, Acher. So the Radak wants to say that in between these two kings, uh, in between one king to the next, in other words, he killed one king, they appointed another one. And that king was also killed. That's what he wants to say. Oh, yes, <laughs> Lomash, you can argue that they were two kings. So, the Malvin gives you a couple of choices. He says, either, this is an interesting thing, he's saying, either Yoshua conquers the cities of Hebron and Zavir, and then the surrounding areas, later on, Kalev and, Al- and Atniel Ben Kanaz will take over. They'll do it themselves, and that's why it's in different places. Or, really, they did it at that, at that juncture. They were the ones who went, and because Kali Cal- Cal- reminded them, hey, Mo- uh, uh, Moshe promised me some land here. <laughs> she give me something. I like this land. So he goes in and he conquers it, but who gets credit for it? Commander in chief. Not, not, the, not the soldier. And the soldier doesn't get credit for the stuff. It's always the commander in chief who gets credit. So he gets the credit, and also when Adniel takes a, takes place in Devere, again, Yeshua is the, the commander-in-chief, he gets credit for that. And uh, and when it comes to the two kings, the other thing he, uh, the other thing that the Malbim, according to the Redak, says is, it's possible that after he killed one king, another king was appointed. Where do you see that, by the way? In the Torah? We have this in the Torah, too. Where some one king was killed, another king was appointed. Balak, Balak ben Sipor, Balak the son of Sipor. In the case of Moab, he wasn't a Moabite; he was an Ammonite. But he was appointed he was a general of that army. So when the king was killed, it says Vayakam Balak ben Sipor. What do you mean Vayakam? Because he was, they appointed him for that moment. Wasn't normally the king. They appointed him because he was a strong leader. So they made him king of the area. So you see, sometimes you knock out one king. Uh, you knock, what's the expression? You knock off the head of the snake. Another one grows. Long live the king. Long live the king. <laughs> like a battlefield appointment. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. A promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you want those promotions, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you know what? This is a great place to stop. So we're stopping at Lamed Chet, 38, 1138.